Do not update to Windows 11 before you do this. Now, I know it's tempting to say, bugger the bugs, I'm going to update my Windows the moment it comes out. But before we throw out all caution to the wind, there are some basic steps you absolutely need to do to make sure you have a smooth update and don't lose any data. So step number one is update twice. Here is what I mean. Before you take on the big upgrade, just make sure you have the latest and greatest Windows update on your current version of Windows. Simply go to the search, type check for updates and click on that button to make sure you have the latest. Now, if you do and you install something, just reboot your system, even if it doesn't tell you to do that. And the reason we want to do that is because we're gonna go back into the same settings. We're gonna click on start, we're gonna click on that search, we're gonna say check for updates, and we're gonna click the check for updates again. Because sometimes the latest version of the software can only be updated and installed if you have a previous version. Since we've just updated something, we just wanna make sure there are no more updates. Do this repeatedly until it says, hey, no more updates. So step number two is the compatible hardware. Now, there a lot has been said about the hardware required for Windows 11. Now we have a new PC health checking app. This is the first point that you must go to in order to make sure that your hardware can indeed support Windows 11. If you've tried the previous window PC checker, please go and do that again with the new version. Now, link to this is of course in the description below. Just run the health check and see what it tells you. Now, don't panic if you don't meet the requirements. Windows 10 will be available and supported until 2025. So you have plenty of time to update your hardware over the years. And remember, many of us are still running Windows 10. Heck, and frankly, there's Windows 7 still floating out there. Now, I will say there's been a whole discussion about this TPM thing. Microsoft has an entire web page dedicated to show you how to deal with that. Simply follow those steps, change the software in your Windows 10 and in your BIOS. Again, link to all this is in the description below so at this point some of you are thinking wow this is just way too technical for me don't worry I got you I have a special gift for you I teamed up with my computer works who are an amazing tech support company that I usually send people to who don't want to deal with the stuff they just want somebody else to do it for them so for the next 30 days if you guys call them right now and tell them that you came from the techie guys YouTube channel you're gonna get one month free of unlimited tech support seriously you can call them as many times as you want to fix any issues that you have and you speak to a real human, this is amazing. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, what's the catch? What about after the first month? Well, if you love them, you can sign up with them for their monthly unlimited tech support and that starts at $29.99 on a monthly basis, no long-term commitment. So basically for about 30 bucks, you have somebody to call any time you have a problem. And if you don't like free tech support, simply cancel before the end of the month and you'll be charged absolutely nothing. Now, I rave about them because I have sent loads and loads of people to them when they're stuck with their tech problem and not a single person has called me back saying, this was a terrible experience. You will love my computer works and it's my free gift to you for the next 30 days. Okay, back to the upgrade. Step number three is the backup. Now, you should be able to simply update your software and as long as you don't do a complete clean installation, you will retain your file however and of course there's always a however what happens if something goes wrong what happens if something fails during the installation you don't want to lose all your data so what you always do and I mean always before a major upgrade is make a backup of your important files step number four is check the apps now this is a typical step that is always forgotten Look, if you're running Microsoft Office 365, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work with Windows 11. However, what about everything else that you run? Will those apps still work with Windows 11? What about those company apps that the company made you install? You need to have those checked. Simply go to the websites of the app that you have installed on your computer, make sure the software vendor has a Windows 11 listed as being compatible. Now, it's worth noting over here that Windows 11 apps will be available using the Microsoft Store and Android's app will be in that store as well, but that's a video for another time. All right, step number five, and that is called other stuff. Before you can actually upgrade, you will need to make sure that you can sign into your Microsoft account at account.microsoft.com. Now, if you don't have an account for some reason, you can simply create one, and of course, that's free. 
Now this may be an obvious one, but please make sure when you're doing the update, make sure you're connected to the internet, ideally not using your phone as a hotspot, but rather your home router. The installation files are rather large and you don't want any connectivity dying halfway through. That is when things go horribly wrong. So check this video over here on how to check why your Wi-Fi is slow and how to fix that. Or watch this video over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. Hit the head down here to subscribe so you don't miss any more Windows 11 updates. And I will see you in this video or this video. Or I'll see you in both. Let's go.